Hey everyone, it's Brian. In this episode, we're gonna start talking about the polar form of complex numbers. In calculus, there's something called polar coordinates. In other words, we describe every point in terms of its distance from the origin and the angle it makes with the x-axis. We can do the exact same thing with complex numbers. So here I've drawn the xy plane, or actually the complex plane, if you think of the y-axis as the imaginary axis, and I've also plotted a point z equals x plus yi. Or you can think of that point as a vector. So if I draw the distance to the origin, we know this to be the modulus of z, the length of that complex number. And if I draw the triangle by drawing a straight line to the x-axis, well, this first leg of the triangle will represent the x-distance, and the vertical leg of the triangle will represent the y-distance. So if I label this triangle with the horizontal leg being x and the vertical leg being y, and this angle with the x-axis as theta, I can use basic trig identities to find out what the polar form of a complex number should be. So it looks like the sine of this triangle, sine theta, is opposite over hypotenuse, in this case the modulus of z. The cosine of this triangle is going to be the adjacent side, x, over the modulus of z. And I could just multiply both of these equations by the modulus of z to get an expression for x and y. And if I just substitute these values into my z equals x plus yi equation, we have the polar form. So I've got that z is equal to x, which is the modulus of z cosine theta, plus y, or maybe I'll write it like iy, times the modulus of z sine theta. And if you like, you can factor out that modulus of z. And when you're talking about polar forms, the modulus of z, we call that r r for radius. So this is really r, the radius or the modulus, times cosine theta plus i sine theta. And any complex number can be represented in this form, its polar form. What you may notice about this is r is unique. There is only one distance to the origin of any complex number. However, this angle theta may not be unique. In fact, if we take theta plus a multiple of 2 pi, one full revolution around the unit circle, well then we'll be back in the same spot. So this angle is not necessarily unique. This angle is called the argument. And it's denoted like this, arg z. Now if you do want one distinct angle, we call that the principal argument. And that's denoted capital arg z, which is theta, uh, given that theta is inside the interval minus pi to pi. So the angle inside one revolution of a unit circle, that's the principal argument with a capital ARG. Let's find the polar form of this complex number, 1 plus i. So what we need is we need to know what the modulus of this number is so we can find r. We also need to find the argument, the angle theta, that this number makes with the x-axis. It might be helpful, helpful for you to plot this. So r being the modulus of z is easy to compute. It's simply the square root of the sum of the squares of the components. So in this case, just 1 squared plus 1 squared. This is square root 2. This is the modulus of z. The angle, we have to think about trigonometry. So how can we figure this out? Well, again, if you have this triangle, in this case, this is a triangle with legs one and one. Well, I can find that the tangent of theta is the opposite over the adjacent. So I've got tangent theta is one over one. And if I take the inverse tangent of both sides, inverse tangent of 1 will be theta, will be my argument. And if you put this into a calculator, or if you're good with basic trig skills, you'll know that inverse tangent of 1 is equal to pi over 4 radians, or 45 degrees. Now, 
this is not unique. Remember, pi over 4 plus any multiple of 2 pi is also valid. I'm just going to use pi over 4 here because pi over 4 is the principal argument, the argument between minus pi to pi. So now that I know what r is and I know what theta is, I can write this in polar form. I can have z equals r, which is square root 2, times the quantity cosine theta, which is pi over 4, plus i sine pi over 4. And uh, it's totally cool if you want to simplify these trig expressions. So cosine of pi over 4 we know is square root 2 over 2 plus i. Sine of pi over 4 is also square root 2 over 2. And you can see pretty quickly that if you were to distribute this uh, root 2 through these parentheses, we would get back what we started. So this is the polar form of this complex number. In this video, you learned all about the polar forms of complex numbers, where they come from, and how to find them. If you're enjoying this video series, make sure to subscribe so you don't miss anything, and I hope to see you next time where we start talking about how to multiply and divide complex numbers using their polar form. Have a great day, and I'll see you then.